Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Rosmo. And okay, I'm not even gonna beat around the bush. Today's video is gonna be me looking back and reviewing an old movie that I watched back when I was a teeny tiny baboo. So for today's Ever Heard Of, we are gonna be talking about Barbie as Rapunzel. And I don't even know where to start with this movie. I mean, I love looking back on it, but watching it again, I have mixed feelings. And I'll talk about those mixed feelings today. I don't really recommend you watching it, like, spoilers don't even matter for this movie anymore. Let's just jump right in here. So Barbie as Rapunzel was made back in 2002, and gosh, was it hard to find a clear version of this movie. <laughs> it's because it's so old. It was a direct-to-DVD animated movie that was directed by Owen Hurley. This movie starts off with Barbie painting with Kelly and says that she can't say what Kelly should draw because imagining is the best part of the creative process. I like that part, but I'll be honest though, while I was in the halfway point of the movie, I was so ready to call it so dumb it's funny. But at the end, it kind of wrapped everything nicely and turns the tables around you if you ever thought Barbie did the wrong thing in the movie. Let's talk about that later. Okay, so for now, as always, let's split this in into three parts. The story, the animation and music, and the characters. So first off is the story. Let's get one thing out of the way. This is for kids, and I don't mean like it's animated or a children's franchise, that's why it's for kids. No, no, no. There are plenty of franchises and animated movies catering to kids, and yet thinks of the adults as well. But this movie is really aimed for kids. Just for kids. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. I said this because the lessons this movie will teach kids is being creative and drawing from the heart. And also being honest, not lying. That latter lesson really hit me hard because throughout the movie I kept thinking, oh wow, she could have just asked the guy's name and not tell Gothel, you know? I thought Rapunzel was just being stubborn or naive because I thought there was no harm in learning the guy's name, but in actuality, she didn't want to lie and I admire that aspect of her sticking with her virtues. The movie turned the tables on me when at the end Rapunzel gets trapped because Gothel was convinced she was keeping the mystery guy's name a secret, so she made a spell to keep people with a lying heart in. And you know, if she did what I thought she should have done, which was ask the guy his name and just tell Gothel she didn't know, she'd be trapped in the castle forever. <laughs> Honesty wins this round, I guess. I can't personally say I learned any lessons from this back in the day when I was a kid, because all I can remember was Penelope, Barbie vandalizing her wall and then shimmering dresses and uh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Watching this movie as an adult though, the only thing I can say is that it's so bad it's good. Like there are times when I would laugh aloud because it's either really weird that it's funny or because of the weird awkward short pauses like these ones. I have to find Rapunzel. Melody, Lorena, look! Enough for everybody! Though as someone who is used to taking care of children and seeing how each child learns daming el Though, as someone who is used to taking care of children and seeing how each child learns differently than others, I think this movie is really good for kids. It's very enticing to watch, it has multiple good lessons, and the story is simple and wraps everything up nicely at the end. As I watch this though, like the honesty part of the movie, Barbie as Rapunzel would turn the tables on me multiple times. I started this movie expecting that Rapunzel would be the kind of girl people would rage about on Twitter for being too passive, too much of a pushover, or too naive. But she's actually graceful, but at the same time brave and not in the modern sense. She's not loud or hyper. But she's also not meek and shy. I thought she was naive for not escaping, but she's actually really, really brave to decide to stay in the castle for the sake of Penelope's father. Like that's a difficult thing to do. You have your freedom, but can you really go back knowing you'd get in trouble? Maybe you won't be able to go back anymore. Well, she went back because she didn't want to drag people into what she's doing. I think that kind of kindness is rare to see nowadays. The kind of selflessness to even people who you're not close with. I don't think Rapunzel had any personal regard for Hugo as a friend, but cared for Penelope and Hugo enough to do what she did. Or the part where she decided to step out of the castle. She was so freaking brave. If I were in her shoes, I wouldn't even dare go out if it has the slightest chance of me getting caught. But she did that and she did not regret anything. I also enjoy the side of the story of Penelope. Having this falling out with her father, they show both the perspectives of Penelope and Hugo. Which may I inform you, Hugo has the same voice actor as Sashumaru from Inuyasha. Who other is capable of bringing someone back from the dead? 
Don't tell me you've been here playing all day. Sorry, just, just a little fun fact. I enjoyed learning it. Hugo's first appearance made it seem like he's a bossy father that doesn't care for his daughter at all. But in later scenes, you can see him actually defending her and showing how he cares for her. Just not in front of her, apparently. I'm sure he was just scared of what Gothel might do to her if she doesn't turn into a proper dragon, quote-unquote. Hugo tells Penelope the virtues of a dragon which are bravery and loyalty to their master. In this case, is Gothel. Have you turned your back on our code of honor? For ages, a mighty dragon has stood for power, courage, and loyalty. I know, Father. But soon enough, those virtues shine on on Penelope when she decides to confront her father for Rapunzel's sake. Please, I have to tell you something. No, nothing more from you. I... I'm going to tell you anyway. Rapunzel saved your life, and you didn't even know it. She was free, and she came back here because I asked her to. And I think that was a nice touch for the movie. Everything I said was what I liked about the story, but the pacing was really all over the place, especially in the middle part. And the development for Prince Stefan and Rapunzel was really weak. Hell, Prince Stefan's presence was so freaking weak, I didn't even remember him until I rewatched this now. The only time Prince Stefan had any substance was when he saw the effect the war between the two kingdoms caused for their people. All in all, this story is boring. <laughs> but I'm 100% sure kids would have a magical ride and they'd get a lesson along the way. If you want to have a dry laugh or just go down nostalgia trip, you can watch it, but I don't recommend it. Before I continue on to the next part, I'd like to thank this video sponsor, Gaumon. Gaumon provides affordable and functional tablets. I've done a review on their latest product at the time of this recording that provided me not only a portable and high pressure sensitive tablet, but also other buttons that could help me multitask while I draw. If you want to check out other products from Gaumon, links are in the description, as well as my review on the Gaumon M1220. Don't forget to use the coupon code to save $10 off of your purchase. Okay, let's go back now and talk about the animation and the music. Look, I don't need to beat around the bush on the animation. It's not good. <laughs> Granted, it was made back in 2002, so it makes sense. It's not ugly, per se. They put a lot of effort in making Barbie look pretty and not mess up like Gothel or these creepy, small children. But 2002 animation had a lot of rough edges, though it did add to the comedy whenever there were awkward scenes. So I'll, uh, no, I, no, I'm not gonna give it a pass, sorry. It's just not good. The music is what I've wanted to talk about. The main theme of the movie is beautiful. They play it at the start and some parts in the middle and at the end, and I don't think I can get sick of listening to it. Listen to this. Her shop and the main square and a garden outside the castle. Where? She painted what she dreamed. When you do that, you never go wrong. The music does feel magical, and when she paints on her wall to make a sort of portal, it really gives that fantasy vibe. As much as the animation wouldn't stand in today's times, the music holds up pretty well. It's really good. Now for the characters. Rapunzel, like I said earlier, she's not a flat character like what you'd imagine someone like this would be like. She has a hobby, she's not a pushover or naive, she's really kind, she knows what she wants and she sticks by her virtues. Though I kind of laughed at her when she said it was foolish that two kingdoms are at war, I thought she was being naive. But if he didn't do it, can't the kings talk? Explain? It's too late for that. The only way to end the feud is through force. Well, that seems foolish. Because if people could talk to each other out of war, then there wouldn't be war. It's more complicated than just having tea and chatting. But then you learn why the two kingdoms are fighting. Let me ask you, Frederick. You hate this man. Why? He attacked my kingdom without cause. You stole my daughter! No! For the thousandth time, I never stole her! No. I did. And Rapunzel was so freaking right. It's so freaking dumb. Why? Why is that the reason for the war? Oh, it's so freaking dumb. Just talk. Speaking of dumb, these two kings. Let's get this out of the way. I don't think these two are fit to be kings. One declared a feud on the other kingdom just because his daughter was kidnapped. And I understand that's a valid reason to have a heated exchange with another kingdom if they were even remotely responsible. But this king just said, nope, you did it. I'm not listening to anything else. You, 
you did it. Legit! Families were separated because, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but because he didn't want to sit down and talk. The kings are not important. And I don't like them. Let's move on. Next is Gotham. I'll admit I was so confused with her, and I thought she was just going to be bad and mean for the sake of being the villain. But at the end, she had a reason to be mean. Granted, her reason was really petty, but aren't we all? She would have been my daughter if you had married me. I simply took what was mine. You took Rapunzel? Where is she, Gotham? I want to talk about the last scene. She really did shine in that scene, at least for me. I loved it. Like, you should have loved me, but since you didn't, I'm taking your daughter. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Isn't that fun? Is it just me? Though, as much as I enjoyed her last scene, the scene before that was so freaking weird. <laughs> so weird. Her running around with a blonde wig just to be chased by this young prince will be the contents of my nightmares in the following nights. Gosh, why? Next is Rapunzel's friends, Penelope and Hobby. And and apparently Hobby is the castle guard. Yeah, this bunny. Okay, so I really like Penelope's character. She's not annoying. And even if she is the super hyper and the more loud character in this movie, I like her. Honestly, I'm surprised that I managed to like Penelope because characters like that are really hard to make them likable since it toggles between too loud and annoying to not funny at all. But this one was just right, at least for me. She has a lovable side, especially since she's... Andami is! She has a lovable side, especially since they showed us her relationship with her father and her development in overcoming her fears, both in confronting her father and flying massive heights. I feel you, Penelope. I- the heights thing? Ugh. I can't stand that. Javi had a little screen time, but he did have quips that made me laugh. So, you know, I can't hate him. He's cool in my book. Now let's go to the last part of this review, which is the revisions with Rosmo. Now, when I was thinking of what to revise in this movie, I kept bumping into the same conclusion, which is... Tangled already did that. The things that can be improved in this movie has been polished with Tangled. So I tried to change things up. So I thought of a couple revisions. So revision version 1 would be to replace the prince with one of these knights. I don't want a pretty but bland boy. I'd rather have an ugly funny guy who can be either of the two knights. I don't know. I thought it would be cute for Barbie to have a love interest that wasn't the usual Ken doll. And also the knights would have a more practical view on the situation of the kingdoms. It's more likely for them to see how the feud of the two kingdoms affects the people. And I guess it'd be cool if the knight wanted to amend the two kings for the people as well as meeting Barbie and stuff. And it, that, that'd be cute. That'd be nice. Revision version 2. Compile all of these moments of Barbie and Stefan together and not separately. That way I can understand why Barbie was so happy with her time outside and also wanting to meet Stefan again. Because she got to experience a hell of a lot instead of just saving a kid talking about politics with some random guy. And also with this Barbie and Stefan would have time to grow as they walk together in the streets. Barbie gets to interact and socialize with the people and Stefan could learn more about the problems the people are facing because of the feud. And then she goes back and gets locked up. Then she finds the magic brush, she gets stopped by Gothel immediately. And I think that would be a better way to pace the movie than just meeting the guys, cut back to the castle, meet the guys again, and then finally reach the climax of the movie which was in the freaking castle again. Well that's all for the revisions with Rosmo. So for this movie, I guess I'll rate it as a 4 out of 10? I don't like it at all. <laughs> but of course, that's because I grew out of my liking with these kinds of films. But as a kid's movie, I think it's definitely there as a 5, 6. Not really a step up, I'll be honest. And I gave it a higher one because of the lessons it has for kids, especially ones with an artistic side. What do you guys remember about this movie? Have you watched it for the sake of this review? Let me know what you guys think about the movie. Big thanks to Gaumon for sponsoring this video. So yeah. Oh, if I were to be stuck in a tower with a jealous petty witch, I would love to have Amanda Rone Idenge and Christian V with me so that we could chill out and trash talk the witch when she's not around. Wouldn't that be fun? I think that would be fun. <laughs>